Welcome back. You're live with Expresso as we delve into a vital conversation, but something that I think about far too much and terrifies me. I think it's one of many nightmares for parents. Your child leaves home to enjoy a day of fun and sun and water and doesn't return home because their young life has been claimed by the powerful force of water. We've seen it experienced in our country over the last couple of days. The National Sea Rescue Institute, which works tirelessly to protect the lives of those who enjoy our coasts and inland dams has now issued a brilliant new swimming monitor ID tag that can aid in the prevention of child drowning. It is brilliant. Joining us now is NSRI's Head of Drowning Prevention, Andrew Ingram, to shed more light on the necessity of this tag and also how we can protect our children in the worst case scenario. Andrew, so good to have you with us this morning. I think this is amazing what you guys are doing. But let's talk about within South Africa, how prevalent is uh, drowning in South Africa and how quick does it take for for someone to actually drown. Good morning. Uh, we estimate that about 600 children drown every year, uh, fatal drowning, and oh. about 2,000 people each year. Um, it's a lot of people. And I think that uh, we really need to concentrate on children. Uh, children under the age of 14 uh, form about 30% of the fatal drownings in South Africa. So what we're trying to do is to encourage uh, people uh, parents, caregivers to look after children when they are in or near water. It's really important to understand that supervision is the number one safety um, that we can give to, to our children Just and be barrier there. of water. So keep them safe, watch them and, and I think to follow through on that, if you understand that drowning is silent, you understand why you have to watch them. You can't listen for somebody drowning. I've, I've got to ask that if you are that caregiver, if you are that person who has the responsibility of looking after a child, or for in any case where, where drowning is possibly happening, you want to be prepared. What do we need to look out for? How do you know that a, a situation has, has crossed that line into that, into that space? So you need to watch carefully. And you, um, the, the reason that we brought this uh, monitor um, ID tag uh, out, and we, we're suggesting that people use it. Um, if you have a group of people around a swimming pool, for example, there should be an adult who's always watching the children. And generally what happens is maybe you're having a braai or you're having some sort of event and everybody's swimming and everybody's happy and playing and, yeah. and the adult gets distracted. Somebody says, hey, John, how about a Coke? Uh, and you look around to get your Coke and uh, when you look back, it's too late. So what we're suggesting is this tag, it's a bright yellow tag. Um, if you are on duty, your only job is to watch the children in the pool. I love that. Nothing yeah. else. So half an hour later, somebody can take over from you, and their job is to focus only on the children, not on social media, not on cell phones, <laughs> not on chatting. Um, so what do you look for? Somebody who is drowning will not flap the water and shout for help. It's completely silent. If you're close enough, and you should be, you will see fear on their face, that classic white all around the eye. Um, they're unable to, to shout for help, to talk, because all they want to do is breathe. The, the, the danger signal is a vertical body position, so like somebody standing. Okay. So if you're horizontal, you're floating and you, you, you're able to control yourself. As you start to go more vertical, it's more difficult to hold yourself, your head above water. Then the head will tilt back, you'll see fear in the eyes and quietly the person will slip under the water. So anybody in a vertical body position, get to them very quickly. Right. Chilling. Chilling, yeah. Chilling. I don't even want to think about it, but I'm sure there's so many parents that want to get their hands on this. Where can they access it and how, it, how easy it is, is it to get your hands on the stag? It's, it's extremely easy. If you go to the Sea Rescue website um, and you just put in the search field um, water safety monitoring, you'll see our, our story uh, on it and you can download the tag. It's a PDF, print it on your home printer uh, and there you go hand it around, make sure somebody's watching the children. I love that, make it a conscious choice and a decision and make it clear within that group of adults who's supervising. Um, and I can certainly understand that. I've got to, I've got to commend you on the work that the, the NSRI do in all spheres. Um, we, we owe you so much. In this space specifically, I'm sure you must get so frustrated whenever you hear about a drowning because so many of these instances are 
they are preventable. And I think one of the biggest um, areas on the coastlines that we, we hear so much about a rip current. And I mean, I've been caught in a rip current before and it took me about an hour and 20 minutes and I, I was this close to giving up and I'm a strong swimmer. How do you deal with that? So yeah, rip currents are an, uh, an enormous problem. It's the biggest dangers that bathers face on the beach. And the answer is very simple. To choose a beach where their lifeguards on duty swim between the flags. So rip currents are very hard to see and lifeguards are trained to do that. They'll put their flags up in a safe area. Um, so there's no chance of you getting caught in a rip if you swim on a beach that's guarded and you swim between the flags. It's really important. What are some of the other guidelines, especially with the beaches and pools being reopened now, some guidelines for parents out there, but also for the children out there that's watching with regards to going um, into these spaces? Uh, yeah, I think, as I said in the beginning, um, supervision is number one for children. Um, children under the age of four are most likely to drown in and around the home, so make sure that the water is buried off, or the children are buried off from the water. Right. For example, it's not possible to bury off a dam, but it is possible to bury the child or from from that from dam that so watch okay. watch the children know that drowning is silent um, if you have sliding gates um, sliding doors or security gates that children can open they they will watch you carefully and they'll be able to do that oh, yeah. <laughs> make sure that the pool fences are high enough that a child can't climb over it and especially little boys um, they'll try and climb over everything so there's double latching gates and then um, pool nets and so on make sure that it's says child safe so it's not something that's going to keep the heat in the pool that if if the weight of a child lands on it it'll buckle the child slip underneath and, and you won't see it never leave toys around in a pool area uh, and then learn how to do CPR and in an emergency phone 112 for help 112 Thank you so much. My brain is still processing a lot of what you've said. So many, um, like, penny drop moments here. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for making parents aware of the need for supervision. I think that's the, probably the most important take-home for me. But you can go to nsri.org.za, download the PDF, print it out yourself, and ensure that if you are in that space as a parent or an adult and you are that designated supervisor, you watch those children. Thank you so much for the work that you're doing in, you. in every sphere. We really do appreciate you coming through this morning. Thank, Thank you, you for your support.